Hi guys, how are we all doing? I've been pondering the last few days since the Berlin Marathon and all the chatter about the Adidas Adios Pro Evo 1 shoes that were worn by Asifa when she obliterated that women's world marathon record. What was it, 2.11.53? Wow, just astonishing. But I'm gonna to touch on that in a little while and I hope that we might be able to draw a little bit of conversation down in the comments from, from you. But first, King Eliud Kipchoge, five Berlin marathons. Look, any doubts from Boston were well and truly put to bed. What is it now? 16 marathon wins from 19 starts over the 42.2. Uh, look, for me, he is the greatest marathoner of all time. He is going for a unprecedented third Olympic marathon gold medal in Paris next year. Who's going to beat him? Will it be Kip Tum, who got really close to his world record uh, in London this year? I think Kip Tum is running the Chicago Marathon in a few weeks, so it's gonna be interesting to see what he puts down there. But he may be the only one who can stop Kip Chogi from winning a third Olympic gold medal in Paris next year. Now just going back to the beginning of the video guys where I touched on the Adidas Adios Pro Evo 1 shoes, the shoes worn by Asifa when she smashed that world record in Berlin. What I hope to do is strike up a bit of a discussion here with you in the comments down below about technology with the super shoes, about price of shoes etc. If I'm going to talk about a almost $800 shoe, I guess I should use its full name shouldn't I? It's the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro Evo 1. Oh, that's a mouthful. But I suppose if you're gonna have a shoe worth that much, it's gotta have a decent name. Has it got to a point where technology has gone too far? For me, technology is just a part of life. We're going to see these advancements in all walks of life. What concerns me most about the advancements in technology in the running shoe space is that this technology is getting so expensive that it is putting it out of reach of the average Joe Blow runner. Now these shoes, the Adidas Adios Pro Evo 1, 450 pound, 500 US, almost 800 Australian dollars. Now, I'm never going to go out and pay $800 for a pair of running shoes. That is just ridiculous. My opinion is that we should all have access to this technology. It's just unfortunate that it now has become, I guess you could say, elitist to have these super shoes because they have become so expensive. And not everyone can afford $400 for a pair of shoes. How the they're going to afford $800 for a pair of shoes is beyond me. Now this is one of the main reasons why I would never buy an almost $800 shoe. And that's because Adidas are marketing this as a one-off use shoe. What? So you're gonna pay almost $800 for a shoe that you're gonna get optimum performance out of once and then it's going to be cactus no thanks and what sort of impact is this going to have on the environment how many of these shoes are going to end up in landfill i understand that shoe companies are trying to beat each other with these super shoes but come on eight hundred dollars to run in them once Surely we can do better than that in 2023. I know there's gonna be people lining up to buy the shoe and I get it. You know, you're looking for that last little edge that might get you over the line for a sub three, but it's not for me. I just couldn't justify paying that amount of money for a pair of running shoes that I might only get one use out of. It's outrageous. Now I have read that there was only something like 500 pairs of the Adidas Adios Pro Evo 1 shoes made in the first run. Apparently there is more coming later in the year. But guys, 
no way in the world am I paying $800 for a pair of shoes. So what I wanna do is pose two questions here for a discussion that you can share down in the comments. First question is, would you pay 800 Australian, 500 American dollars or 450 UK pounds for a pair of running shoes? And secondly, has technology gone too far in the running shoe space, making it unaffordable for the average runner? Or are you okay with it? Going to be very interesting to see what some of your responses are, and I will share those responses here on a future video. So we're getting close to the end of 2023 and there's only two more Abbott World Marathon majors to go. Chicago, which I've touched on, New York in early November. I was down in Sydney a couple of weeks ago for the Sydney Marathon, a candidate race to become the seventh Abbott World Marathon major. Just seeing Berlin last week. Sydney, I've still got a way to go, but I've got my fingers crossed and I'm rooting for them to become a Abbott World Marathon major. Then we're into 2024 and it all starts again, doesn't it? Tokyo, Boston, and just touching on Boston too, guys, I have decided not to go to Boston. I'm not one of the 33,000 entrants for 2024 Boston Marathon. I just felt that um, I'm at a stage in my running with all the issues that I've had over the past six or seven months that it's just not worthwhile to go to Boston in 2024. Disappointing, but it's the right decision. Just means that I don't have to worry about preparing over summer for an early marathon in 2024. So the Boston Athletic Association announced the cutoff times for Boston Marathon 2024. 529. That's five minutes, 29 seconds. You had to be inside your qualifying time to get in. 22,000 and a few hundred got in. So that means there was 11,000 runners who were left disappointed. Pretty savage cut for 2024 after the last few years, but it's just starting to get back to normal. And I think it's just a fact too that running has become so popular since COVID pandemic but there's just so many more runners now. Did you get into Boston 2024? Let me know down in the comments guys or did you miss out unfortunately? low tide this morning. While this video has got a bit of a shoes theme about it, I thought I'd just update you on my shoe rotation, where I'm at with some of the shoes, how many clicks I've got them, how they've been performing, how I've been using them. Now the shoes I'm going to touch on are the Asics Novo Blast version 3, 500 kilometers on that, the Nike Pegasus 39, 200 kilometers on that, the Nike Invisibles, I always say invisible. The Nike Invincibles version 2, 330 kilometers, and the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version 3, which I haven't written down, but it is 280-ish kilometers on that shoe. Let's start with the Essex Nova Blast version 3. I have read that the version 4 is possibly coming out later in the year. I've run in all iterations of the Nova Blast and have absolutely loved it. Version 1 and version 2, about 800 kilometers. 500 kilometers in this shoe. That outsole just starting to wear down a little bit there on the forefoot. Not too bad there at the back. Probably will get another couple of hundred K out of it. That upper is still looks really good. Not even any creasing or anything in there. Midsole as well, hasn't broken down. Still plenty of life left in that midsole. I've been using this for long runs, steady runs. Haven't done any speed work in this shoe because I do have other shoes in my rotation for that but this has been one of my favorite shoes now for a number of years. You can bop along at any sort of pace and it's got good support. Had a lot of fun running in the Asics Nova Blast versions one, two, and three. Okay, the Nike Invisible. 
the Nike Invincibles version two, version three up here on screen coming really soon. Looks a little bit different to uh, version two. Uh, this one, just a plotter for me. I haven't been excited by this shoe at all. What is it, 330 kilometers uh, outsole? Still looks really good. Still plenty left in there. The upper, nice and tidy, no creasing or anything. Not even any breakdown in that midsole either. Used it for a couple of long runs, but it's mostly just a very easy day run shoe for me now. It's a real clunker. It's not a shoe that I will gravitate to much, but just keeping it in my rotation for those easy days. Let's stay in the Nike stable. We've got the Nike Pegasus 39. I believe the 40s have been released, so that's a picture of them there. 200 kilometers in this shoe. I've had this shoe for a long time, so that probably shows you what my thoughts are, but that outsole still looks really good. The upper still looks really good. Midsole hasn't started to break down. Yeah, look, it's just not a shoe that I'm excited with. Very much like the Nike Invincibles version two. It's not a shoe that I will open the drawer and go, yep, I'm running in that one today. It's almost like I'm pushing it aside to get to another shoe. Um, what have I used this shoe for? There's been no method to running in this shoe at all. I've done a couple of 10 to 15 kilometers in it. I've done a park run at a steady pace. It'll stay in my rotation just for those shorter, easy, steady days. It seems to be me and Nike shoes at the moment where I just, uh, they just don't excite me. And finally, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version threes. This is the third pair that I have had of the Rebels. I had two pairs of the Rebel version twos. I have loved this shoe from day one. It is the bomb. Uh, not sure if there's a Rebel version four coming. Haven't been able to find any information about that. But this shoe, look, I've done what, 280 kilometers in it. That outsole still looks bloody good. The upper is great. That midsole hasn't broken. Oh, look at this. Look how soft that is. That is yummy. I would run in this shoe every day, but got to have shoe rotation, a little bit of softness, a little bit of firmness in my shoes, just to make sure that uh, all those little tendons and muscles and so forth are working in the legs. By far my favorite shoe to have run in over the last few years. It is bouncy, it's responsive, it's just so much fun to run in. You can do speed work, you can do tempo, you can do steady, you can do long runs, uh, easy runs. There we go guys, just a quick look at my shoes and my shoe rotation, where I'm up to with them. Yeah, sure, some of them are older versions and the newer versions have hit the shelves and there's some newer versions coming, but I uh, just thought to give you a quick update on how I'm finding those shoes. All right, let me know too, guys, if you run in any of those shoes and how you have found them. Uh, are they good, bad, ugly, or otherwise? All right, thanks very much for watching this video, guys. Really do appreciate you stopping by to check it out. Wherever you are in the world, run well, run safe, be kind to each other, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, Rick.